Hi YouTube, Watchify here with another video. I had a Sapphire Crystal arrive today and I planned on upgrading my Seiko SKX009 Harlex Crystal. So I thought why not film it and make a quick video on how I do it. Now I realize that the majority of people with this or a similar watch where mod parts like this are available have no intention on replacing the crystal themselves. Either they're happy with the OEM Harlex Crystal or if they want to replace they would pay someone else to do it. This video is just to show that it's one of the simpler mods if you have a few inexpensive tools. Sapphire crystals are widely available and don't cost that much. I usually get my mod parts either from Crystal Times, Namoki Mods, or DLW, but I think you can even find them on eBay and AliExpress. When purchasing a replacement Sapphire Crystal, you first have to make sure it's compatible with your watch. Thankfully, the websites I purchased from make it easy to locate a compatible crystal. You then have to choose what style of crystal you want. Do you want a double dome crystal or a flat crystal? Do you want a beveled edge or no beveled edge? It actually does matter because if the bezel insert you have is a sloping one, and let's say you choose a flat replacement crystal, it's going to look weird because there's going to be a large gap. On one of my earlier mods, you can see that I did the reverse and I got a double dome beveled crystal and paired it with a flat ceramic bezel insert. So here you can see it's not ideal as there's a big gap where the two meet. I should have gone with either a sloped insert or a crystal without a bevel. In the case of my SKX009, I wanted to keep the look of the flat OEM crystal, so I got a flat sapphire crystal with a bevel that replicates the OEM hardlex. I did this because visually the double dome crystal adds to the thickness of the watch, and the SKX is already a pretty thick watch, so I didn't want to increase it. Another decision you need to make when buying a replacement sapphire crystal is what anti-reflective coating you want it to have. Getting it with a blue AR coating is common, but I've seen options for green, purple, red, and clear AR before. The color of the coating does matter in the sense that if you look at the watch in certain lighting angles, you will be able to see the color, but usually when looking at the crystal head-on, you won't notice it. These coatings are offered because sapphire crystals are highly reflective, so it's an effort to cut down on the glare. I find that the sapphire crystals still produce a lot of glare even with an anti-reflective coating though, so I can see why some people would rather leave the OEM Harlex or Mineral Crystal in place. It also matters if the coating is only on the underside or on both sides of the crystal. Sapphire crystals offer increased scratch resistance, but I've heard that crystals that have an AR coating on top could still eventually show scratches because it's the coating that's scratching, not the sapphire crystal itself. For this reason, it's preferred if the AR coating is only on the underside of the crystal. Not to make this more complicated, but when choosing a dome crystal, it matters if it's a single or a double dome crystal. A single dome will add some distortion when viewing the dial, and having a double dome crystal is supposed to cut down on that distortion. The sapphire crystals typically cost about $40 to $50. If doing this yourself, the tools you'll need are a crystal or a case back press like this one. It usually costs around $20 and I got mine from Amazon. It comes with various bits of different sizes to accommodate different watches. Step one is to prep the watch by taking off the bracelet or strap and placing it in a case back removal vise so you can unscrew the case back. You also need a case back removal tool. Uh, I have a couple different types that I use depending on how tight the case back is screwed on. I want to mention that I have scratched many a case back while trying to remove them, so be careful and it helps to place a plastic film on it to try to prevent a bad scratch if your tool slips. Once you have the case back off, now you have to remove the movement. To do this, you need to be able to remove the crown which on Seiko movements is just a matter of pressing down on a small lever while pulling out the crown at the same time. Now that the crown is out, you can gently pry out the movement. Once it's out of the case, put it in a safe location off to the side. Now you have to press out the old crystal. Make sure you choose a press bit that's sized properly 
and not so large so as it'll damage the chapter ring. For the bottom press bit, uh, try to find one that will support the bezel but still allow the old crystal to drop down into it. Now that the old crystal is out, make sure that the crystal gasket is still in place. Sometimes it comes out with the crystal, so if it did, you need to make sure you put it back into place before installing the new crystal. When handling the new sapphire crystal, it really helps to handle it carefully and not touch the underside as you could leave some fingerprints or smudges that will be difficult to wipe off later. That's why they often provide finger cuts with the new crystal. Now you place the new crystal on the case and try to get it as level as possible while pressing down gently to get it ready for the press. Once you've done that, locate the appropriate size press bit. The one on the bottom should support the case while the one on the top should be as close to the size of the crystal as possible. Start pressing down with force and rotate the watch and repeat. Check the crystal to see that it's seating evenly on all sides. If it's going in uneven, you can sometimes apply pressure on the side, on the other side to even it out. Otherwise, you'll need to pop out the crystal and try again. While pressing down, you won't get any sound or pop that'll tell you that the crystal has been fully seated into the case. So just keep pressing and checking for evenness. Don't be afraid to press too hard as the crystal won't break from this process. Now that the new crystal is in place, double check that it's level and look at it carefully for any smudges, lint, or hairs before going on to the next step. Here's where I use an air puffer to blow out the inside of the case. Now use the puffer on the dial and place the movement back into the case and seat the movement fully. Turn it over and check that the chapter ring alignment is good. If it isn't, I take the movement out again and either nudge the chapter ring or I nudge the movement slightly in one direction until I'm satisfied with the alignment. Check again under good lighting or a magnifying glass to be sure that the underside of the crystal and dial are clean. I'm one of those people who would get really bothered if I later saw a speck of dust or lint. Now you just need to screw the case back on. You might want to take this time to lubricate the case back gasket. So that's pretty much it. Put the bracelet or strap back on and you're done. This model changed the look of the watch slightly as the sapphire adds a different bit of clarity to the watch, but the main purpose is so that you no longer have to worry about your crystal getting scratched. I guess if someone really wanted to be thorough after one of these mods, they would check the water resistance integrity with a pressure tool. I don't have one of those, but I also don't dive with my watches, so for me it's something that I don't bother checking. I'd say though that if water resistance integrity is a big concern for you, you, I mean, it probably would be safer to just not um, mod your watch and just leave it in OEM condition. That's it for this video. I know there are already a lot of instructional videos on swapping out a crystal. To a novice, it might seem intimidating or something too risky or hard to do. This video was just to show that it really isn't that difficult if you have the right tools and a little bit of knowledge. If I can do it, I'm confident anyone can do it. You get the satisfaction of knowing you did it yourself, and you would have saved yourself some money by not having to pay someone else to do it. Thanks for watching. If you found it helpful or interesting, feel free to leave a like, comment, or subscribe, and hopefully I'll see you in another video.